the sea. To you, it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to make a Hungarian beef stew. And to go alongside that, we're gonna make a Caesar salad with a sun-dried vinaigrette dressing. And we are gonna make a cookies and cream dessert. So let's get started on the beef stew. The good news about this one is it's done entirely on or in your crock pot. So as I do very, very often, I've got my meal kit kind of already planned. I've got my parsley, my beef, and my onions already chopped and in baggies ready to go. I do that a lot at home because I just don't always have time in the mornings, especially if I'm using my crock pot to get everything chopped and ready to go. So I do it what, usually on Sunday afternoon. I will wash all my vegetables that I'm gonna need that week because I'm a meal planner and get everything ready to go. Now, I'm just gonna put some uh, beef stew, chuck roast cut up or beef stew meat in the bottom of my crock pot. That's gonna be about a pound, pound and a half. I'm also gonna add one medium onion to there. See how easy this is? Um, this I don't have prepped because I didn't have any carrots, I had to go to the grocery store. So we've got two carrots that I'm going to slice into bite-sized pieces. This is one of those things, get it ready to go, put it on low. When you get home in the afternoon after work or whatever you're doing, dinner's pretty well ready. All you gotta do is serve it. Make a salad if you want. Even the dressing in this salad you can make ahead and then don't dress your salad till you're ready to serve it, but you can get all of the components ready to go. So we've got two carrots that I'm just gonna cut into bite-sized pieces. Okay, drop them in the crock pot. Where's my little veggie scooper? I love my little scooper. Use it all the time. Have one at home. I use a big cutting board. I get asked a lot about this cutting board and I've had it for years, literally over 10 years. It's still going very well. So you can find you a good cutting board at any good supply company that makes, uh, or any store that sells cooking utensils and things. I need a little small paring knife. Well, we'll just do it without it. I've got one green pepper here but I'm gonna just take out the stem and any excess rib. This is a delicious beef stew. It's Hungarian because we're gonna use a lot of paprika in here in the sauce. All right, cut this up into bite-sized pieces. I always cut my peppers from the inside out. It's easier because a pepper naturally has that coating on there. That's not a wax coating that the grocery stores put on there. It's, an, it's a natural part of the pepper. It's called the skin. You blister that and peel that off for roasted peppers. Okay, one green pepper. Now stews are supposed to have chunkier pieces, so don't cut them too fine. And then two potatoes that I've scrubbed. Now, I leave the peel on my potatoes. I scrub them, and for something like this, I really just prefer the skin on potatoes. Cut your potato in half, and then in pieces with a flat surface on the bottom of your cutting board, safer that way. Okay. Got two, these are Yukon Golds, but you could use red potatoes, you could use just Idaho potatoes would be fine. Okay, that's a big one. Okay, you can peel if you want to. I love 
soups and stews. I make them year round. It does not have to be winter for me to want soup. I make soup all the time. Soups and stews and chilies are just oh, so good and so good for you and really honestly so easy to make, especially when you get to use your crock pot. Love crock pot meals because we're all busy and we don't always have time to get home at five or six o'clock and cook a meal and this way it's ready for you. And then one bag, this is a, uh, this particular one. Well, I don't see the weight on there, but anyway, one bag of lima beans. These are Ford Hook. I prefer baby lima beans, but the store didn't have any baby lima beans for whatever reason. Now let's make the sauce. I have in this bowl some paprika, sweet paprika. Don't use the hot paprika. I have one can of beef broth. Oh, I got my parsley. I need to chop that. I'm going to whisk that together. I'm going to add some salt and some pepper. Okay. I'll pour that over the stew mixture. And then I have one can of um, tomatoes, whole tomatoes that I'm going to chop. I'm going to take them out of the liquid. Try not to make a mess. Pour as much of the liquid off of the tomato as you can. You can put your hand in there. Be careful if you use the kind of can opener that uh, leaves a sharp edge. And then just roughly chop these. If you want to use diced, already diced tomatoes, you can. I just prefer to chop my own in this recipe. If you have home canned tomatoes, by all means, use those. Okay. That's a big one. I find that tomatoes that are canned really have better flavor than fresh tomatoes, unless it's tomato season, because they're processed right at the peak of ripeness. This needs to cook in your crock pot for about eight to 10 hours on low, four to five hours on high, okay? It's just literally dump and stir. Get all those juices that you can get up. Okay, now our parsley. I like flat leaf Italian parsley. A couple of tablespoons or so. Just chop it up. Okay. Put that in, and then stir it with a big spoon. Stir it all together, turn it on, and go about your day. And when you get home, you are gonna have a delicious, delicious Hungarian stew, okay? That's all there is to that. Put your cover on and go about your day. I'm just gonna clean this mess up. When I come back, we're gonna get started on our dessert. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Now our beef stew is cooking and we are going to get started on dessert. This is cookies and cream. Now I have in here one block of cream cheese and one stick of unsalted butter. I just added some vanilla and all I'm going to do is whip those together. Start it out slow unless you just enjoy wearing it. I don't. 
and then turn it up. You want to totally incorporate the cream cheese and the butter. It needs to be at room temperature. Or you can do what I did and microwave it for about 45 seconds. Brings it right down to temperature for this. Okay. No need to clean the beaters. In this bowl, I have three cups of milk. And I'm gonna add just two packages of vanilla pudding. This is the instant kind. This is meant to be easy. Okay, two packages and three cups of milk. Now, normally you would use four cups, but I want it a little thicker. So we just reduced the milk by one cup. And then you don't need to worry about cleaning it because we're gonna actually combine these things. Stir your pudding together. Very simple to do. This is an easy recipe. Okay. Now I have one cup of powdered sugar that I'm gonna add. You can do it either with this or with this, either one, it doesn't matter. Okay. All righty, now, we are going to add this to this. Get a little spoon here to get all of it out of there. All right, mix that together. I like to start on slow. This is a good job uh, to have for your children to do. It's fun for them. It's fun for us too, though. But anytime you can get, you know I talk about this all the time, anytime you can get your children in the kitchen, get them in the kitchen with you, okay? Then we're going to fold in one container of frozen whipped topping that we have thawed. And I'll show you what I mean by folding in. Okay. Don't need my beaters anymore. All righty. Take your bowl and then use a spoon, or in my case, this spatula. Go about halfway through Clean up the counter when you make a mess, like I always do. And then, you see how I'm just kind of going halfway through there and cutting it in, basically. You want to blend that all together. The reason you don't want to use the mixer with the, the whipped topping is it will actually deflate it. And you don't want that. You want it whipped. You want it fluffy. All right, and it's okay if you see some streaks of your pudding in there that just adds a visual. See right there how you can see that streak going through there? That's all right, leave it in there. Okay, now I have one package of just chocolate cream filled cookies in a baggie and I'm gonna use my meat mallet and smash them. Perfect job for your kids. This is a dessert you can totally make ahead. This would be a hit at your next, you know, family reunion or a family gathering or church dinner. You know how sometimes places or baby showers or whatever, you could make it in little individual um, containers if you wanted it to be a little fancier. But for any kind of a gathering or any night of the week for that matter, this is a perfect dessert to take. You want to kind of chop those sort of fine. Let's see how we're doing. This is a great job for a little one. I think that's probably good. A little messy, but that's okay. What you want to do is take almost all of this. You want to save some for the top. And you want to put that in the bottom. 
of a pan. Just press them down. That's your crust. I mean, how easy is that? And then you wanna take your pudding mixture and just dollop that over top. Mm. Okay. And get all of that on your mixture. Smooth it out over the crumb, the, the cookie base. Got some egg noodles cooking that we're gonna serve with our Hungarian beef stew, if you want. We'll talk about that in a minute. Alrighty. Okay. Clean up your edge a little bit. Okay. Now, take the remaining cookie crumbs and sprinkle them over top. Okay, you see how we've got that kind of... Just sprinkle those over top, as many or as few as you want. It just makes it look very, very pretty. If you wanted to do this with like the mint flavored, these cookies in the mint flavor, oh yes, that would be delicious too. And that's all there is to that one. All you need to do is put that in the refrigerator and let it chill for a couple of hours or so. So it's perfect dessert to make ahead and leave it in the refrigerator. And then, you know, the, the cream will kind of help soften up those cookies just a little bit and it'll be ready to go. So I will put that in the refrigerator and there you go. I'm gonna clean up my mess and when I come back, our stew will be done, our noodles are done. Our dessert is done, we're gonna chill it, and we're gonna make the salad dressing for a wonderful, easy Caesar salad. I'll be back in just a minute. Now, our stew is done, our dessert is done, let's make the salad. I have here a blender, and I have a half a cup of sun-dried tomatoes that are actually um, soaked in oil. You buy them that way. I drained most of it, but if there's a little bit of the flavored oil, by all means, pour it in there because it, it's really good. Now, I'm not going to worry about chopping these too fine because I'm gonna be putting them in the blender, but I do wanna kinda give them a little bit of a head start. So I'm gonna put my sun-dried tomatoes in the blender, along with some red wine vinegar and some olive oil. A traditional Caesar salad would be made with uh, egg and anchovies and lots of other things, but we're not gonna be doing that today. We are gonna make a sun-dried tomato Caesar salad. A teaspoon of salt and about half a teaspoon of pepper. And any oil that was left out of your um, tomatoes. Now, this is loud. So we're just gonna watch it go. You need to pulse it till it's really, really chopped and liquefied. Takes about a minute. But it's so good. I love sun-dried tomatoes. So we'll just let this process. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's see how we are. Now, I'm going to taste this just a little bit because I need to taste it for seasoning. 
Oh, that's perfect. Mm, that's perfect. So, to serve, that's it. I, generally speaking, do try to make my own dressings because you can control what's in your dressing when you make it yourself. A lot of the purchased bottled salad dressings have got so much added sugar and so many chemicals and things in it to help preserve it. And it, I mean, it literally comes together in just a matter of seconds. So you got, you know, I have lots of recipes in the cookbooks for all kinds of different salads, dressings. I've got lots of vinaigrettes because that's what I like the best. But I have French and I have Thousand Island and ranch and all of those things that you can make at home very, very easily. Now, traditionally, Caesar salad is served over romaine lettuce. And I just bought some croutons. If you want to make your own, go right ahead. But traditionally, it would be served with some croutons and some shredded Parmesan cheese. As much or as little as you like. And your dressing. Don't add your salad dressing to your salad until you're about ready to serve because the oils and vinegars will break down the lettuce and, and it will become soggy. So don't serve your salad dressing until you're ready to eat. And that's all there is to a homemade sun-dried tomato Caesar salad. I'm gonna sprinkle just a little tiny bit. Need to grind up some more pepper, a freshly ground pepper. If you've got some sea salt flakes, it's really good over that too. So there you go. Now. Let's get our beef stew ready. Now our beef stew is done. I served this just over some cooked egg noodles. That is totally optional, but Hungarian dishes do tend to have noodles in a lot of their dishes. So you can serve this over some, uh, just some cooked egg noodles if you want, but it's so good. And then you just stir it all together and you've got your chunks of tender beef. You've got your potatoes and your carrots. And it's so absolutely delicious and warming on the coldest of days. Oh, so, 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 so good. You could top it with a little sour cream if you wanted to, maybe some extra fresh uh, chopped parsley if you wanted to. And here's our Caesar salad that we made with our homemade sun-dried tomato vinaigrette and our delicious cookies and cream dessert. Now, with that particular one, you can mix up whatever kind of pudding that you, flavors that you like. I used vanilla, but you could use cheesecake, you could use banana, you could use the mint, you could use anything you wanted. It's fine, you use the flavors that you like. And we did a base of just crunched up chocolate stuffed cookies, saved a few for the garnish on the top. There's a quick, easy meal for you to make any day of the week. Thank you for joining with me, and I will see you next time on Everyday Manna. Thank you for watching Everyday Manna with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Manna, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.
hope the days come easy and the moments pass slow. And each road leads you where you want to go. And if you're faced with a choice and you have to choose, I hope you choose the one that means the most to you. And if one door opens to another door closed, I hope you keep on walking till you find the window. If it's cold outside, show the world the warmth of your smile. But more People of all ages, from different walks of life, we have hopes and dreams, but live in a reality filled with pain. We are the family and friends of alcoholics, and our lives are controlled by someone else's drinking. We may be different, but we have one thing in common. We want our lives back. If you need help, call Al-Anon and Alateen at 1-888-4-ALANON or visit our website. To help them, you have to help yourself first. 